Hi everyone and welcome back to another exciting build along video. In this video we will be displaying a new tension system that will take your actuators to new lengths. As always we will take you through a step by step assembly of this new linear actuator and have you up and running in no time. Please feel free to leave comments below on this new design and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can be notified of new releases. Here is a quick overview of the assembly and a display of the simplicity of this build. Now without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on this build. On this first step we're going to focus on assembling our wheels. You should have four extreme wheel kits. Inside of each bag you'll see the contents which is going to include two bearings, two precision shims, and a nylon hex nut. So you can see we have the extreme wheel shell, our two open built bearings, the nylon hex nut, and two precision shims. So in order to assemble this wheel, it's a simple process. You're going to pop in one of the bearings to the outer face of the shell. You're going to add one of your precision shims here in the middle, and you're going to sandwich that in with your additional bearing. These additional components, the precision shim and nylon hex nut, will be used later in the assembly. So we can just put these to the side, and let's go ahead and assemble these additional three wheels. Now that we have our four wheels assembled, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be focusing on attaching our nut blocks to our extra large gantry plate. And this is going to build up our carriage for this long actuator. So in this step, we'll need our extra large gantry plate. We'll need two of our nut blocks, four M5 20 millimeter screws, four three millimeter aluminum spacers, and four nylon hex nuts. Now the four nylon hex nuts, two comes with each one of the nut blocks, so you'll simply take those out of the kit and use those for this assembly. So the first thing we're gonna pay attention to is the hole orientation for the plate. As you can see, we have a larger set of holes on the right side of the gantry plate, if you're holding it like I am. And then you'll see that we have a smaller set of holes here on the left side. So the larger set's gonna be used for the eccentric spacers, and this will be for the, the wheel assembly. And then the left side will be used for the fixed wheels, which is gonna use the aluminum spacers. And the reason I'm mentioning this now is the nut blocks need to be placed in these two outer holes. So we wanna make sure that our gantry plate is oriented to where our eccentrics are gonna be on one side, and our fixed wheels are gonna be on the opposite. So these two holes, we're gonna go ahead and insert our M5 20 millimeter screws. And with the screws erect, I'm going to add my three millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. And taking the nut blocks, I'm gonna make sure that the hex side here is facing upright, and that's for our nylon hex nuts. And lastly, I'm going to add the nylon hex nuts to each screw. Now sliding the plate off the table, I'm going to keep the screws in place and just work on one block at a time. Now when I'm tightening these down, I'm simply going to leave a little room. So you see how my nut blocks are mobile. That's so it's easier to line up the lead screw to the block, so you're gonna feed it through one and then the next on the opposite side. And then from there, we'll be able to tighten down each screw once that lead screw is set in position. Just really helps with the assembly. So now that we have that complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be assembling our wheels to our extra large gantry plate, and this is going to create our gantry cart for our actuator. So taking our extra large gantry plate, I want to focus on the difference between the whole size on each side. Remember we have the large side and the smaller side. The one's for the fixed wheels, the others are for the eccentrics. In this assembly, we're going to need our extra large plate assembly that we have thus far. Four of our extreme V-wheels, four precision shims, four nylon hex nuts, 
two six millimeter aluminum spacers, two six millimeter centric spacers, and four 27 millimeter M5 screws. In addition to that, I'm using my ball driver, open belts ball driver, it's three millimeters, and my open belt spanner wrench. Now to start this assembly off, first I'm going to insert screws onto each one of these corners. So taking the 27 millimeter screws, let's go ahead and insert those now. Okay, with a plate on its back and my screws erect here, I'm going to add my six millimeter aluminum spacers first, once again to the smaller holes on, these, on this side of the extra large gantry plate. And then I'm going to add precision shims to each screw and an extreme wheel to each screw. Sometimes you'll find that you have a precision shim that is wedged to the side of the bearing. The simplest way to cure that is to take a ball driver and just sift it into place. Taking the nylon hex nuts, I'm going to thread those onto each wheel. Okay, I'm going to rotate the plate so we can focus on the eccentric side next. This is going to receive our 6mm eccentric spacers. And one thing to pay attention to with the eccentric spacer is you're going to see this 6mm stamped end. Now this indicates the fully open position of the eccentric. So wherever this rotation is, is going to indicate how much friction or preload that you'll have on the rail with the wheels. So you can mark these ends with a permanent marker so it's easier to see. With the six millimeter side stamped, I can see it pretty well so I'll know my adjustments. And you can see that we have an off-center hole here so it works as a cam. So when you make that adjustment, it's gonna tighten or loosen those wheels to the rail. So the six millimeter stamp side needs to be facing away from our fixed wheels. So each one that I see that is stamped is gonna be facing away from the fixed wheels. And then I'll add our precision shims next. And our extreme V wheels on top of the shims. Next, I'm gonna add the nylon hex nuts. And from there, I'll use the spanner wrench and my three millimeter ball driver. And we're gonna tighten these wheels. So now that we have our extra large gantry card assembled, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're gonna be focusing on our eccentric adjustment for our 1500 millimeter C-beam rail. So for this linear actuator in particular, we're using the longer rail. And this is really a simple process. I'm gonna to try to explain it as best as possible. The eccentric adjustment seems to throw people off sometimes. But what we have here is our fully open position. You can actually see that the screws are closest to this outer lip here on the diameter of this hole. So that's exactly what we want. That means it's a fully open position. So when we slide this onto the rail, you're gonna see a lot of play, but it's gonna just slide onto the rail very easily. So taking my gantry cart, once again, you'll see that we have the fixed wheels on one side, eccentrics on the other. This is very important because it's gonna stabilize your plate once you adjust your eccentrics. If you had it on the opposite side, it's just not gonna fit. So that being said, we're just gonna slide the wheels onto the rail. And to my surprise, that actually fit pretty tight. So even at a fully open position, we're not gonna have a whole lot of adjustment to make on this gantry cart, but if I hold down the rail and try to move the gantry cart, I'm gonna feel some movement. Now it's slight, it's not a big deal, but we want this to be completely tight to the rail. We want smooth linear movement. So taking our spanner wrench, my centrics are both on this side. What I'm gonna do is rotate these in the same direction, just a slight adjustment. And what I like to do is just feel the wheel and as I'm trying to move the wheel, it's trying to move the gantry cart. It's the same with the opposite side. You should have that friction on the rail, which is known as preload. So on this second wheel, we're gonna do the same exact thing, same adjustment, same rotation. And as I'm adjusting, you can actually feel the tension being placed on the wheel. So when I get to a point where I feel like it's just really tight with two fingers, 
I'm gonna double check that wheel, make sure the friction's on the rail, and that is exactly what you should see. So if I were to try to move this gantry cart, it's trying to move the C-beam. So that's exactly what we want there. And that's a simple adjustment. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're going to be attaching our lead screw to our extra large carriage plate. So in this assembly, we're just gonna need the lead screw and our assembly that we have so far. This lead screw measures out at 15, 40 millimeters. The 40 millimeters is basically for the additional components that will be added in the tension system that is going to be applied to this linear actuator. So basically we're gonna have 20 millimeters on each side of the actuator that's going to accept those additional components. So to get started here, we're gonna feed the lead screw through one side of the nut block, and then we're gonna feed into the next. And one thing that we need to remember is to tighten down each one of these screws on our nut blocks once we get the lead screw through. So let's go ahead and start over here on the left side. Simply going to feed this into that nut block by rotating to the right. And once you get to the second nut block, what I like to do is just position my finger on this side so I can adjust the orientation. And I'm gonna to continue to rotate that to the right until I see that lead screw protruding past. Okay, now that I have the lead screw past my nut block quite a bit, I'm not gonna feed it all the way completely through the, the nut blocks. So if I pull back, you can see that I have, you know, a good amount of the lead screw through the nut blocks. But what you can do is just push the lead screw down. So what we're looking for is 20 millimeters on each side of the actuator. So as you can see here on the right side of the actuator, I have a good 20 millimeters sticking past the end of the C-beam. Now I have the same thing on the opposite side. And that's all that we're looking for there. Adjustments can be made once we're adding the additional components to the lead screw. So don't concern yourself with the exact measurement We'll get into that on the next step. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step, we're gonna be focusing on attaching our end plate to one side of the actuator. This end plate in particular is going to receive our flexible coupling, which will then attach to our motor on a later step. In this assembly, we'll need one of our open builds motor mounting end plates. We'll need four. M5 15 millimeter screws, our quarter inch flexible coupling, and our thrust bearing set, which will be a three part assembly. And then in addition to that, I'll have my ball drivers here, three millimeters, a 2.5, and a two millimeter. So on the end of the actuator, I'm going to take my open belts motor mounting end plate, and I'm going to slide that into place to fit in line with the tap holes on the C-beam. And I'm going to use my four M5 15 millimeter screws and three millimeter ball driver to attach the plate to the C-beam. Okay, once the screws are attached, I'm going to add my flange bearing next. And the flange bearing will have this outer rim, which is going to fit on the outside of the plate. Next, I'm going to add my thrust bearing which is the three-part assembly. For this, you'll see the bearings here are gonna fit inside the recessed hole of the outer shell. And you're gonna sandwich that together, add that to the lead screw. And following that, we'll take our quarter inch flexible coupling, which the quarter inch bore is gonna be smaller than the eight millimeter side. The eight millimeter side is what we're going to be attaching to the lead screw. The quarter inch side will attach to our motor shaft. Now one thing to pay attention to when adding this flexible coupling to the lead screw is we want to make sure that we have our set screws, not the clamping side, but the set screws facing upright so when we adjust the motor orientation, we can simply slide it in and lock that into the flat portion of the motor shaft, which we'll get into on later steps. So I'm going to take the 8 mil side and attach it to the lead screw. Using my two millimeter ball driver, I'm gonna tighten down that set screw. 
rotate and tighten down the clamping side of the flexible coupling. Once again, I'm gonna rotate this to where my set screw is facing upright, and that completes this step. So let's go ahead and move forward. On this next step, we're gonna be assembling the opposite side of this linear actuator. So we're using one more of our open builds motor mounting end plates, four of our M5 15 millimeter screws, our thrust bearing set, a tensioning nut, one of our flange bearings, and of course my ball driver set here. So I have a three millimeter ball driver and a 2.5 for this assembly. Okay, starting with the end plate first, just like we did the opposite side, we're gonna attach that to the C-beam using our M5 15 millimeter screws. Okay, so once you have the screws attached to your C-beam, next we're gonna take our flange bearing and place that into the open slot here on the end plate. Next, we'll take the thrust bearing. Once again, same configuration. We're simply sandwiching this into the three-part assembly. Attach that to the lead screw. And following that, we'll be adding our tensioning nut. One thing that we need to do first before we add this is loosen this set screw. And I do that with a 2.5 millimeter. And what I like to do is place this nut to where that set screw is facing up. Because when we come back later in this assembly, we're going to add tension to this nut and we need to make sure that we can lock that set screw into place. So I'm just gonna rotate that to where it's facing upright. I'm just gonna lock that down for the time being. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step. On this next step, we're gonna be attaching our NEMA 23 stepper motor to the opposite end of this actuator, the one that has the flexible coupling on that side. In this step, we'll need our stepper motor, four 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, four M5 50 millimeter screws, and of course my ball driver set, I've got a three millimeter, 2.5, and two millimeter. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is take my NEMA 23 stepper motor, and I wanna show you the flat portion of the motor shaft. So as you can see here, the flat portion of the motor shaft, and then you have the rounded rest of the shaft. So this flat portion of the motor shaft is going to attach to our flexible coupling and lock in with this set screw. So taking our M5 50 millimeter screws, I'm gonna go ahead and run these through each side of the motor. And you can see I have the orientation of my motor with the wires hanging to the right, and that's just for easy access to run this actuator. So next I'm gonna add 40 millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. And I'm going to lock it on to the end plate. Taking my three millimeter ball driver, I'm gonna go ahead and attach each screw to this end plate. Okay, now that I have all of my screws locked into the end plate, we're gonna turn our attention here to the flexible coupling. Now here on the flexible coupling, we just wanna make sure once again that flat portion of the motor shaft is inserted and it's aligned with that set screw. From there, I'm gonna take my two millimeter ball driver and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that set screw down onto the motor shaft. Once I rotate this, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the clamping portion of this flexible coupling. And now that we have our flexible coupling attached, so let's go ahead and move on to the way that we're gonna tension this whole system. Okay, so on this next step, we are going to attach our black box to our motor. And of course, the power supply is going to be powering our black box. And what we have is one motor attached. I have it attached to my Z axis. That way we can control that axis in particular. If you want, you can add it to any one of these axes. It's completely up to you. I'm using the Z in this video. And on our laptop, we are connected to Open Builds Control. So what we're going to do is connect our control software to our black box, and that's gonna put it into an idle state. And that's basically gonna lock your motor so we can add tension to this opposite side of the actuator. So let's go ahead and turn our attention over to the tensioning nut side of the linear actuator. Now on this side of the actuator, what I'm going to use for this 
is a pair of pliers. You can use vice grips if need be, but we're simply going to add tension to this nut, so we need to loosen the set screw on top. And once we loosen that set screw, I'm gonna come in here with my pliers, I'm gonna grab it and start to rotate to the right. Now you're gonna feel tension being placed onto this tensioning nut. One thing that we're looking for is the proper amount of tension. So essentially, if you to rotate too much to the right, what you're gonna hear is a misstep on your stepper motor, just like that. So now at that point, I've got to reassess my tension onto my nut. So I'm gonna bring my pliers back in and I'm gonna rotate to where I'm on the cusp of missing a step and I'm gonna tighten that set screw down. And at that point you have put enough tension onto that lead screw for a 1500 millimeter length. So now we can run these longer lengths with lead screws without having that whip that you would see in a compression system. So now that we have that complete, let's see how it runs. No excessive whip, and this tension system is running like a champ. Thanks for tuning in, and make sure to subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for future videos.